Hello, my name is Darwin Streams, and today we're gonna make some workshop mods. I say jump pads. Jump pads have a lot of use and they can improve any map and any mode, really, because they add so much mobility to heroes that normally don't have that mobility. So let's get on to it. Today we're gonna be working with the PTR workshop again, because I believe it should hit live just any day now. And to start making that, I think we should choose where we want that jump pad to be. So let's start the game and find a good spot. I suggest we find a good spot for the jump pad for Anna to use. And I say, here is good. We can get access to that high ground. We're gonna use this position. How do we save that? We create a global rule. I'm gonna call that jump pad position. And we need to set a point. We need to set a variable that has that point where we're standing right now. What we do is we put vector, which is a set of coordinates in the world, and we press this button. And it records eye position from game. You see Anna is standing right here. And now this is her eye position. Let's create an effect at this position. Create action and we create effect. Let's go with sphere for, for starters. A green sphere. And position will be global variable A that we just set up. Let's look at this. And there we go. We have a sphere at Anna's previous eye position. That doesn't look like a jump pad. What we want is we want it to be halfway underground. Let me show you how to do that. We have two ways of doing that. We can use not this position, but a result of a small calculation. We use add, we take global variable A, and for value, put in vector y-axis minus 1. So what that does is it takes global variable a position and takes away 1 meter of y-axis of that position. But I'm going to use a different method for that, because if I want to use that position in the future, I will have to do that every time. So we're going to leave that as global variable a, and here I'm just going to manually subtract. So let's put that to minus 0.7. That should submerge the orb halfway underground. There we go. Maybe we can submerge it a bit more. But it's good. Obviously it wouldn't be a jump out, it's just a visual effect. Now we need to set up an impulse that will be applied to us when we jump onto that or walk into that. Let's create a new rule. It's going to be ongoing each player because we want the effect to be applied to any player that walks into that. We call that impulse. When do we apply impulse? When person is supposed to be propelled upwards. When person is close enough. So we use distance between event player and global variable a which is our jump pad position and we compare that distance if that distance is less than one for example you would think one is good because one is radius of that sphere but i was just putting just a bit more like 1.2 it would just feel nicer player so if the distance between player and jump up position is less than 1.2 meters, we apply impulse to event player, and direction is up, which is 1 on y-axis. Or we can just put up here, which is the same thing, it just looks shorter, at the speed of 20. Let's test that. The moment of truth. Hey! And now we can get to this high ground. 
Or this one. This is a working jump pad. Good job. It took us two really, really short rules. Now let's make this a good jump pad by adding effects and maybe by adding multiple jump pads because that would require some new ways of doing that. To add a bit of an animation to that, we will need to create a new action, which will be called Play Effect. And we're going to take... Uh, I think Good Pickup Effect is good here. Make it green, and we're going to play it at global variable A, with radius of 1. And let's add a sound effect as well, which is also Play Effect. By the way, the difference between play effect and create effect is that play effect just plays as an animation and disappears. And when you use create effect, you have to destroy it later if you want. So sound effect, play effect, debuff impact sound should sound good. Color doesn't matter because it's an, a sound. Position event player, so the player can definitely hear it. And radius is volume of that effect. And we're going to put in 200. Hey, This is a nice jump pad. With an animation, and a sound effect, and everything. You might be wondering, what if I want to make multiple jump pads around the map? Will I have to recreate all that for each jump pad? And the answer is no, of course not. Let me show you how to make multiple jump pads. First is we want to decide where we want our other jump pads to be. And I say let's go with the other high ground. Let's put it here. So now we need to store multiple positions. And this method of using of storing it in just one variable will not work. I'm gonna delete that and make it in a new fashion. We're gonna set global variable at index, which will create an array. An array is basically a list of values, a list of variables if you wish. Index 0, which is always the first index in array, all arrays start with 0. And value is this vector. And also it should be submerged. And we need to put the other vector as well. Let's go here. And we're going to use modify global variable. And operation will be append to array to add an element to the end of the array. Value is vector once again, we record and we subtract one. So now this array is the list of two positions. But don't forget that we need to remake this create effect action as well. We're going to delete that. We're going to go through that again. Create effect here. Uh, let's make this blue now, just for a bit of a change. And for position, we're going to use value in array. Array is global variable A, index 0. And we need two of these, at index 0 and at index 1. Let's see that in-game. And there we go. We have effect at index 0 and at index 1. And this is what this array looks like. It's a list of two points. But the problem is that you remember our apply impulse action is only set up for global variable a which in this case will be taking just one value from that array which is the first value so this jump pad will work and this jump pad will not let me show you how to deal with that so we need that impulse and that entire block of actions to work when we close enough to any of these two and for that, 
delete this. We're gonna use a very convenient condition that's called is true for any. Array is global variable A, which is our list of points, and condition is compare distance between, just like the last time, event player, and instead of using specific point, we're gonna use current array element. So what this does is it goes and checks through the entire array and if any of the values return true, this will work. And don't forget to put 1.2 here and less or equal here. Now let's test that. Let's see. Jump part 1, working fine, and jump part 2, working great. <laughs> There we go. You can put as many jump parts as you want. For each jump part you want to add, you just need to append a new value here and create an effect for that position. And you don't need to change anything here. It will just work every time. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Leave a like, follow, subscribe and all that. Bye bye.